Hi there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK, right into your homes, wherever you are. If you like my videos, please like, share or subscribe. Um, and existing subscribers, as usual, thank you for your support, thank you for your messages and thank you for your comments. And today I want to talk about um, visa scams because apparently, especially now Christmas is coming, people are getting desperate. We've got a lot of undocumented people around. They have a group of people, some of them have been arrested, who are going around saying that they can legitimise your stay. Well, not legitimise it. Well, they are saying they can legitimise it, but they're being fraudulent in order to do it. And what they're doing is they're calling up people. I don't know how they're finding these people to know that they're undocumented. But what they're saying is that they can provide them with um, the correct documentation. They can forge pay slips. They can um, forge bank statements. So it makes it look like you've got a certain amount of money and you can stay in the country. And they've been charging about £700 per person. Now, a group of them have been arrested, but they're still some at large. What will happen, though, is that you've paid out this money believing that you are OK when you're not. And that is the most important thing. You've got a full sense of security because for the moment, you might be able to get um, a job based on your credentials. But as soon as they find out you're screwed and you're just as vulnerable as you were before you paid out that £700, but you're £700 um, out of pocket. So I'm just going to read out a little bit. Um, preceding Christmas time, this is when they become more rampant. Um, the Ford gang have set up bogus companies. And that's the thing. They set up these websites that look so convincing. But they've set up... Um, bogus companies to help 900 illegal migrants stay in the country in, big, in Britain's biggest fake scam ever. The group laundered millions of pounds through 53 businesses, including Immigration For You. So I don't know if you've been involved with Immigration For You, but I know as desperate undocumented people who may feel, you know, they might not be able to get their application through for whatever reason, you could turn to some of these scammers and, you know, as a last resort. And all I'm trying to do is protect you and say, listen, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. If anything sounds too good to be true, it usually is. And you're forking out money and it's only going to be a temporary relief. You're not going to be any better off. Anyway, they've created fake pay slips and provided false information on around 900 applications for general and entrepreneur visas between 2008 and 2013. They've just come. They've just been. It's just been brought to light. Their aim was to make the migrant look as if they were well-paid employees as applicants for entrepreneur visas must show that they have access to at least 50,000. One of the gang customers was working at a fast food restaurant, but his accounts showed that he was earning 50,000 annually. David Fairclough from Immigration Enforcement, Criminal and Financial Investigation described the scam as highly organised, sophisticated attack on UK's immigration system. Some of the migrants in the UK on temporary visas paid the £700 in cash in order for them to remain in the UK. The fraud was uncovered in 2011 when the Home Office identified a suspicious pattern in the series of point-based applications for Tier 1 general and entrepreneur visas. But the thing is, it's resurrected itself again. That is why it's in the news now. An investigation by Immigration Enforcement Criminal and Financial Investigation Team was launched and HMRC called in to probe the validity of the companies and the PAYE claims linked to them. Mariam Arnott of the Criminal Prosecution Service admitted this is believed to be the largest ever visa fraud that the CPS has dealt with and it is staggering the lengths these individuals went in order to exploit UK's immigration system. The thing is, is that if there's something that they can do, 
someone is bound to try and do it. Any rule that there is, there's going to be somebody who's going to try and break it or work out a way around it. HMRC worked closely with the Home Office to gather the strong evidence that has helped convict this group. Anyone with information on anyone committing this type of fraud should report it to the HMRC online or call our fraud hotline on 0800-788-887. Another scam that has been uncovered works by presenting a threat to students' immigration status and uses various techniques to extract sizable payments from the victims. In the worst cases, it also embroils them in money mule scams, and that's a bad result for the students. Many of these attacks target Pacific regions in the UK with a high density of overseas students and because all manner of immigration related statistics are published regularly in the UK, it is an open source goldmine for people wishing to create a list of targets. International T4 visa applications from students from China are popular with applications up some 30% since 2018. In 2017, a bleak 2018 academic year alone, the biggest international cohort was from China, with 106,530 first-year students. India was a distant second, with just 19,750 students. So forewarned is forearmed. Scammers may telephone you from a UK number or other countries, Request money to prevent the deportation or the cancellation of your visa. Threaten you by using official looking websites to offer fake services. Tell you there is a serious problem with your visa application. Use email addresses that look official but are not to elicit personal but are not to elicit personal information from you. I think that should say, but are to elicit personal information from you. I wonder if you know how to check whether an email is valid. If you get an email from someone and it says, for example, HMRC in, 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 the, in, the, in the from box, if you click on it, you'll find a really bizarre extension. It won't say hmrc.gov.uk, which any government organisation will have. It will have some X's, it will have some zeros, it will have a long name, funny name. Anytime you see an email address that either doesn't stop at, the, at like hmrc.gov.uk or something.com, but you see this long line of digits, you know it's come it's a scam email so always click on the person who sent something to you to see what that email address says it will tell you and that's how you'll know whether or not an email is a scam email some people don't know that you may know that but i just thought i'd throw that in they give the impression that they can offer you something very easily Offer jobs that do not exist, which is worse because, you know, some of these people are saying, look, I can get your visa. You don't have to worry about anything. We'll get you a visa. We'll sort out all the paperwork. Um, I know you're supposed to have 50,000, but we have people who can verify that and make sure you get your visa application. And we even have a job for you. The fee is 700 pounds. That is what they'll say to you. And don't fall for it. Don't fall for it because £700 is £700 and it's a lot of money. They, so they ask for a deposit at proof that you have enough funds to support. So that's what some of them do. They call these poor students or whoever they are, undocumented immigrants. They say, oh, we need a, a deposit to show that you have X amount in your account. And, and, you know, they've got nothing to do with the government. The government will never ask you for money like that. They'll never ask you to use Western Union. They'll never ask you to use MoneyGram. They will never do that. They'll just look at the documents you have and verify it that way. They're not going to ask you for any money. Anybody asks you for any money, they're not from the government. Um, they'll tell you that they'll... 
tell you they'll use forged documents to get you your visa. Well, that means you you then become complicit in the crime because if they're telling you they're going to use forged documents and you're going to go along with it, then there's no hope for you if you get found out. The Home Office have advanced methods of identifying forgeries and will refuse your application if you use them. And you could get in trouble for it. Is it worth it? No aspect of the government will ever ask you to pay by Western Union, MoneyGram, iTunes vouchers. I think iTunes vouchers is a funny one, though. I guess some of these scammers ask for iTunes vouchers. I don't know. They will try to make themselves seem very genuine and may use language that sounds official. They may already seem to know something about you such as your name and address, or that you have applied for a visa. Then they will ask you for money or for your personal information. The government officials will never guarantee employment in the UK. Legitimate visa office will never come to your home. They will invite you to the office. So anybody who says, oh, look, we're going to come and interview you at your home. We're going to come and see you. They're not official. So if that will ring alarm bells. So you don't have to make out like you know. You don't have to say, oh, well, no, I don't think you should be coming to my house. That doesn't sound right. You just say, OK, I'll get back to you. Because it shows that they're a scam. We don't want to put you in jeopardy or anything, but you have to be smart with these people. Somebody calls you on the phone, they start asking you personal information, or they start asking you to send money by Western Union. You put down the phone. You block the call because, you know, you have to do it at the first sign that something sounds a bit dodgy. And a lot of these people, they, they bank on you being new on the, in the country, especially for students new on the country. Maybe some of these students have done something not quite right in their country or even on the form. And these people bank on you have been doing something wrong. And then, you know, it's just a fluke that they happen to mention that there's something wrong with your application. And then you're going to think, oh, my God, they found out. I better give them some money. And that's it. It's a downhill from there because they don't stop with one payment. They'll keep asking you for payments. One poor girl, she committed suicide after she was forced to pay £6,000. That's how serious it can get. OK, authentic email. Official UK government websites would always have gov.uk at the end of their website address. So that um, should tell you something. Authentic email addresses would always be in the following format. The first name with a dot, the surname with a dot at homeoffice.gov.uk. Or first name dot surname dot at f co.gov.uk or it'll be anything in the front just one word at fco.gov.uk <coughs> sorry as long as you've got the gov.uk you know it's an authentic government official website so click on it first even though it might say home office when you get the email click on the email itself and see what comes up as a return email address. The return email address will probably look very dodgy. Sometimes the email address you see on the screen of a fake website or email is in that format. But when you click on it, it creates an email that will be sent to a different address. And that's what you're looking for. Is the email that's come in when you click reply, is it going back to the same address it came in as? Always check the actual address on the email you are sending. You should be suspicious if what they offer seems too good to be true. An easy job in the UK or a way to get a UK visa quickly and easily. They ask you for money, particularly if they ask you for cash or to ask or pay using insecure payment methods such as money transfers, UCash voucher or pay safe card, which you can buy at the shop. Or like I said, Western Union or MoneyGram. These methods do not allow the recipient to be traced. I think with MoneyGram, it allows the recipient to... I'm not sure if it allows the recipient to be traced. But it's still for the government. The government wouldn't ask you to send your money via MoneyGram or by um, Western Union. 
They'll ask for your bank account or credit card details or confidential information. They demand secrecy or try to force you to act immediately. That's another thing. I'll tell you when I was nearly scammed, um, this, this I don't know who it was, but they called me and they said they wanted me to, um, they said they saw my face and they it was going to go on a bill, billboard at Gatwick Airport and I was going to be paid 10000 for it. Was it 10000 a lot of money. I don't think it was 10,000 though. I think it was probably about 5,000. Don't think it was 10. I think it was probably 5,000. Anyway, they said they were going to send me the check. And I'm like, really? Yeah, they said, like, this was the um, Wednesday. They said, oh, you'll get the check by Friday. Just deposit it. And um, you just need to give us a finder's fee. So I thought, that's a bit weird. Anyway, within two days, I got this check for £5,000 and I'm like, how come, but what, what got my, why I got suspicious is on the envelope, it had my name and address and it was in such illegible handwriting as though a kid had done it. You could tell the person who had written on that envelope wasn't educated. So they'd written it to me and it had the stamp. When I opened up the envelope, it had a check in it for £5,000. No contract for the screening for the billboard. No, no covering letter, nothing. And I thought, nah, something dodgy with this. But I couldn't think what it was because somebody's giving me money. So how can anything be dodgy if somebody is giving me money? But what, hap what happened was is that they started calling me. And they called me and they said, have you put the money in yet? And I said, no, I haven't yet. They said, well, hurry up and put it in. And I'm like... Why would you be asking me to put money in if it's my money? But they was calling me like every day for about three or four days. And I'm like, that's not right. Why are they concerned about me putting money into depositing that check? So I called the bank and I said, I've been given a check. If I put it in, how long does it take to clear? And they said two, two to three days. And I said, does that mean uh, that is when I lose any responsibility? That put, you know, that is when it clears completely. They said, oh, no, it can take up to 28 days to clear completely. So what would happen is most people think a check clears in two to three days. Had I thought that, I would have put that check in. And in two to three days, I would have got thought that 10,000 would be seen in my account. I'm supposed to take out 10% in cash and give it to them as a finder's fee, which worked out to be, be about 1,000 something out of my money. And then in the 28 days when they found out it was a fraudulent check, I'm out of pocket that 1,600 and I haven't got that 10,000 pound in my account that I might have spent on something. So you always have to be wary about people who call you up and start pushing you and telling you to do something very quickly. Like they, they were saying here, you know, somebody asks you to do something quick or fast. Be very, very wary. The government doesn't work like that. Um, where, where was I? Where was I? Where was I? Oh, yeah, that was it. They demand secrecy or try to force you to act immediately because so, that's what they were doing. They were trying to get me to put that money in, in my account straight away. And the funny thing is, I wasn't even working. So technically, if I was greedy or if I didn't have my head screwed on, I could have put that money in the bank. I would have been out of goodness knows how much money I would have been out of if I'd spent any of that money. Anyway, they demand. I've said that bit. The website does look professional. But it could be badly written or designed. You know, you look for spelling errors. Hopefully you're a good speller and you know what, how things are supposed to be spelled. Because that's how you can tell if, if it's a bogus website. Uh, or it does not include any information about the organisation. You are asked to reply to a free email account, such as Hotmail, Yahoo Mail or Gmail, which may also contain poor grammar and spelling. If you are suspicious, 
do not give out any personal information. I know it's hard because you've probably given out the information already, but never give out personal information straight away. Start asking them questions. Don't feel vulnerable. Don't feel as though you are the victim and that you have, I know you're, you might be new in the country or you might be undocumented, but you do have rights. When somebody calls me and they say, is that whatever my name is? I always say, who's that? I hit it right back to them. And then they'll say, oh, this is such and such commercial. And you know, it's some kind of person trying to get business or some kind of scam or, you know, some somebody trying to sell me something. But you hit it right back to them. When they say to you, are you so-and-so? Say, uh, who are you, please? Who's asking? Throw it back at them. And you'll soon find they either put down the phone or, you know, they'll start saying it all, you know, muffled, like you can't even hear what the name of the company is. So if you are suspicious, be, just always threat back, be confident. Um, do not pay them any money. Do not pay them using electronic vouchers. Report any suspicions of fraud. Please report your suspicions or incidents to Action Fraud, either on the Action Fraud website or only if you are in the UK by phoning 0300 123 2040. Action Fraud provides a fraud reporting and advice centre where people and small businesses can report fraud, attempted fraud and scam emails. Your report will then be passed on to the National Fraud Intelligence Bureau and analysed to see if they can be used part of a larger police investigation. You can help stop scammers by warning your friends and family and by making Action Fraud aware of any scams that you have encountered. And I'm just going to, yes, I think that's it for now. Because I've said about the new visa scam has come to light targeting international students from China studying in the UK. And I think I mentioned that. Yeah. I'm not going to go into that because that's a bit too long. Okay, then. I hope that's useful. Bye-bye.